So next we are going to talk about the, so far we have talked about, you know, if you like sort of the, uh, the structure, the mathematical structure of quantum mechanics. But physics is about time and the time evolution. So let's talk about quantum dynamics. Okay, so, so the time evolution of a, of a quantum system is encoded in the time evolution of a of the state vector okay, of the state vector describing that system <coughs> so if i sorry, if i were to use a very geometrical language it would be say so suppose this is my hilbert space so hilbert space is a is an inf is a vector space it could be infinite dimensional and we have some physical system it's represented by some state a vector and then there has to be a time evolution that means that this uh, vector will evolve with time in this hilbert space okay and we want to find the equation which governs this evolution and that equation is the in quantum mechanics that is the analog of newton's equation in classical mechanics newton's second law and that equation is given by the schrodinger equation okay, okay so the schrodinger equation i h bar The time evolution of the state is governed by the Hamiltonian operator acting on psi of t. Okay? <coughs> Just give me one second. So this is the Schrodinger equation. So h bar is Planck's constant. So h bar is Planck's constant. Well, it's actually uh, what is known as Dirac's h or h bar is what Planck called h divided by two pi. And i is the imaginary unit minus square root of one. And H is a special Hermitian operator called the Hamiltonian, which is its eigenvalues have the interpretation of energy. Okay, so this equation is often called the time dependent Schrodinger equation. The name suggests that there should be a time-independent Schrodinger equation. It turns out the time-independent Schrodinger equation is nothing but the eigenvalue equation for the Hamiltonian. I could have written it like this, but I I could have written it with that with the with psi, so this is t dependence. Okay, so this is the time independent
Schrodinger equation. Now, what's in interesting is that because of the presence of H in the time dependent Schrodinger equation, it turns out that if you solve this equation, you have pretty much solved the other one too. Okay, so uh, how do I, what do I mean? So suppose that you have solved this equation for some given time, t equals to zero. So for t equals to zero, you have solved this equation. So what you have is, say h, say e of m, let's call, and then em, em, okay? Now, if I look at the, if I look at the Schrodinger equation, the time dependent Schrodinger equation, then this becomes i h bar d by dt, e of m is equal to em, em. Right. So this is at some time t equals to zero. Okay, so now you know what will happen is that oh uh, we are also assuming that h here is is time independent. So we are assuming that H here is time independent. So uh, that means that the eigenvalues E would also be time independent. So this is a very easy equation to solve. Okay, so this is the time dependence of the energy eigenvalues. It's given by just this phase factor the, involving the energy of the state. Now, any arbitrary state, this is a, an assumption or a postulate. Any arbitrary state of your quantum system can be expressed as a linear combination of the eigenstates of some Hermitian operator. And we can do this for, say, the, um, so we can, so basically what we are doing is that here we have the identity operator acting on size zero, but the identity operator can be written as sum over M, EM, EM, acting on psi zero, okay? So this is, uh, so this means that I can write this as M, E, M at some time T zero and some coefficients, let me call this coefficients A, uh, A, M. So these are these coefficients, okay? Now, we can find out what this state is at the later time t. If I apply on it, well, all we have to do is we just know how this thing evolves in time. And this thing is simply given by minus e i e m t over h bar e m of zero. So thus we see that what, you know, if I, if I know the energy eigenvalues and I'm given some state, I can always do a decomposition of the state in terms of the energy eigenstates. And then any future value of the state is just given by that formula, but now the, the, the phase factor is inserted. 
So now it's useful to express this in a more formal way. Let's introduce an operator. Sir, basically, yes. sir, I'm not sir, and a ground state connect up and a wave to the ground state uh, somehow bear put the paraba solve for it. I'm not a matter of probability. Jacob, no, and a eigenvector uh, value. Jacob stated just to come a time uh, factor to multiply for a bear put the word. No, that's not true. It's not about the ground state. You have to know all the states, all the energy. There's a sum here. Uh, it yes. would be ground state, Hobbit Jodi, if, if there was only one M here, the lowest number of value of M. Yeah. It is okay. true that the ground state plays an important role, especially in quantum theory, but that's not true. To get the evolution, you have to know all the states, the energy eigenvalues for all M. Okay. Okay. So let us formalize this. So let's de define a unitary operator, and I will come to that in a minute, which is the exp exponential of minus i h t over h bar. So what is this? This is a formal series. A formal series where it's a sum over an infinite number of terms. Each term is minus i h t over h bar raised to the power n divided by factorial n. So that's the definition of this thing. So if I do this, then psi uh, of t is going to be sum over m. There was a m. Now, this thing, I can write this as the exponential of minus i h hat t over h acting on e of m at time zero. Because when h acts on this, this gets replaced by e m, right? Because, you know, because this is just a sum of power series. So, so for example, if H acts on EM once, I get EM. But if H acts on EM twice, I get EM squared. So if H acts on EM an infinite number of times via this power series, Sorry. Uh, then I get so this is what I'm used using to write this. But this does not dip, now. This is a you know linear operator. It does not depend on m anymore. So I can factor it out of the sum and then I have psi of t as u of t, u is basically just this operator, u of t acting on psi of zero. So this is how we see that u of t just evolves the state from time zero to time t. So u of t is known as the time evolution operator and uh, it's a it's not a Hermitian operator it's a unitary operator so what do I mean by that if you take u dagger of t you can easily show that u dagger of t is e to the power minus i h of t by h bar of dagger this is going to be e to the power plus i h dagger t of h, but h dagger is h because it's Hermitian. So I get e plus i h of t by h. Now, if I say u dagger of u, because there's a plus sign here and there's a minus sign in u, this is going to be one. 
and this is the same as u u dagger. In other words, I can say u dagger is equal to u inverse. Such operators are known as unitary operators. So given a Hermitian operator, you can always create a unitary operator in the following way. So if you have a Hermitian operator, say x, then you can exponentiate it, put a real number here. So this is a real number. and the exponential, and this is i here, then this operator, which is a function of a, this is a going to be a unitary operator. Okay, so that's a relationship you have between unitary operator and Hermitian operator. So this is then called a generator. Okay. <clears throat> okay, any questions? There's a lot there. So what does it generate? So G, X generates G. The oh, OK. X is the generator. I see. Yeah. <coughs> this is a group theory language. OK. Uh, OK. I want to go until 6.30 if no one has any problem, but otherwise I'll stop here. If anyone has like a class afterwards, then I will s stop, or even if you have to go, otherwise I want to take a few more minutes. I'm fine with this, the class. Okay, is that all right? So do you want to take a maybe a couple of minutes break, maybe?